All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the third part of the show, we are going to talk about Josh Allen praising rookie wide receiver Keon Coleman. So we talked about Antonio Brown filing for bankruptcy in the first segment. We also talked about the Giants' schedule. I broke it down, gave you my early win-loss prediction with the Giants. And I said they'd either go 6-11 and 11 or 7-10. and 10. That's kind of where I'm at right now with them. So now we're going to talk about the Bills. And the Bills are a team that, well, went through a lot of changes. There's no more Stephon Diggs. And let go of some guys on defense. I know uh, Mitch Morse, their center, went to Jacksonville. So they did lose some pieces. And they kind of... Well, they also lost Gabe Davis, so they kind of... It's a, it's a new receiving core going into 2024, pretty much. Now, you still got Dalton Kincaid and, and Dawson Knox and uh, Khalil Shakir, James Cook, but they added pieces, whether it's through the draft or free agency. Through the draft, we're going to talk about him in a second. Keon Coleman, you got Marquez Valdez-Scanling they added, Chase Claypool, Mac Hollins, Curtis Samuel. That That's the receiving core that the Bills are going to rock with in 2024. And some people may say it's not a very good receiving core, but they have spoken very highly of, well, and Josh Allen has spoken very highly of Keon Coleman. And he was taken with the 33rd overall pick out of Florida State. And this is what he had to say, Josh Allen, on Keon Coleman. I think his play style is what we needed in our offense. Talking with our offensive coordinator, Joe Brady, our quarterbacks coach, Ronald Curry, general manager, Brandon Bean, and obviously coach Sean McDermott, a guy that's a big-bodied guy and can go win a back shoulder fade and not afraid to be a physical wide receiver. I think you pair him with some of the guys we have in our room right now. I think Mac Collins has been such a great addition so far to that room with his mentality, his mindset is infectious to others. Curtis Samuel, he's been showing up every single day ready to work. You start pairing those guys up with Dawson Knox and Coleman in the mix now. We're going to have a pretty solid group that works together. And let's see if there was anything else that he said. I think it, start, uh, I think it starts here in OTAs. I'm fortunate enough to have those guys in the building right now. We're throwing throughout practice. We're taking extra reps after practice. Obviously, this time of year, you've only got a certain amount of time where you can get those reps. So just doing some stuff, some extra stuff, or stuff extra, and finding time. We'll get that month off, if you will, in late June, early July. Try to find a window where we can get together and throw again. Just make sure that we're staying on top of things and getting as much reps as possible. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 going to be interesting how this Bills wide receiving core is. And like I said, I, I expect Josh Allen to still have a good year. And I feel like that cloud and that cloud meaning Stefan Diggs now not being there anymore I think that will that, that that freed Josh Allen a little bit and I think that'll that'll help a little bit from the, from that aspect now I think there's going to be times where they are going to miss Stefan Diggs because Diggs was a key contributor to this team for the last several years now and I know that his role kind of got diminished towards the end of the year but I, I still think just his presence alone on the football field, I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be missed to a certain extent. So Keon Coleman had a solid twenty twenty three season with Florida State, fifty receptions, six hundred fifty eight yards receiving, eleven touchdowns. That's the big number right there, eleven touchdowns. And yeah, he's a six four, two hundred fifteen pound receiver. And like Josh Allen said, they need somebody like that in this offense. And like I said, it, it's going to be interesting. The Bills receiving core is going to be different. But, you know, when you hear your quarterback speaking highly highly of you like that, that's got to give you confidence. That's got to give a young player confidence. And we'll see how it works. And the Bills, they play. The, the, the division's going to be better in 2024. It is. And I did my rankings. I had the Bills finishing in second. Got them ahead of the Dolphins. Got them behind the Jets. I still think this team can make the playoffs. I think that a lot of people, because of the moves that were made and the guys that they let go, many people were turned off by that. I mean, I was too. But 
I think you got to respect this quarterback, and you got to respect the head coach. Now, the playoff success has not been there, but you got to give them credit because this team they they were left for dead in the regular season. After that overtime loss to the Eagles, many people thought the Bills are done. But that was not the case. They won out. And then the final game of the regular season against the Dolphins in Miami. They won that game. And they ended up getting the two seed. It's crazy, again, to think that they... They, they could have gotten the two—well, they ended up getting the two seed, but it was either the two seed or they could have flat out just missed the playoffs entirely if they lost to the, the Dolphins. Now, luckily for them, they won that game. They didn't have to play—well, they ended up playing the Chiefs anyways, but they sent the Dolphins to Kansas City to play in that cold weather, and they got the Steelers in the first round, which was a game we all knew they were going to win, and they did. But then they got a, they they faced that team that has been a problem for them for years in the postseason, and they couldn't get done. And now, many people think they're super. Now I don't think this team is a Super Bowl team. I think this team is definitely a playoff team, and that has a lot to do with my confidence in Josh Allen. Now. This is this. I think there's some pressure on him to go out there and succeed. Because now there's no Stefan Diggs. And when Josh Allen first got into the league, he struggled. And then the Bills got him a number one wide receiver. He had Brian Dable bringing him along. And Josh Allen turned into one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, since Brian Dable has left, the turnovers have kind of reared their, reared their ugly head once again. And now there's no Stefan Diggs. So is Josh Allen going to completely revert back to how he was when he first got into the league? I don't think so. I don't think so. But, like I said, I think to some extent that they are going to miss Stefan Diggs. But Josh Allen could go out there and he can have a season like Patrick Mahomes had when... They traded Tyreek Hill. Many people... There were people saying that the Chiefs would not make the playoffs the year they traded Tyreek Hill. And what happened? They didn't miss a beat. They ended up winning the Super Bowl. Now, I'm not saying the Bills are going to do that. But... That's what happens when you have a generational talent at quarterback. Now, I think Patrick Mahomes is in a class of his own. And Josh Allen, to me, is, you know, a top three quarterback. So, you know, it's... And the Bills are a team that, you know, they haven't gotten to a Super Bowl. They got to a championship game, but they lost. And since, and since you know, that was the COVID year, they haven't gotten back to that point. The farthest they've gone is the divisional round. Now, I think they could get there once again, but can they go further? But they're just there's a lot of good teams in the AFC. You know, there's a couple of teams that they're going to be battling it out for playoff spots in their own division. So you got to deal with that. And then you got everybody else, whether it's all the teams in the AFC North, if some of the teams in the AFC West are making a push. Like, I think the Chargers will be in the mix because of Harbaugh, and we'll talk about Harbaugh shortly. And then you got all the teams in the South. That division's going to be competitive. So there's a, there's a lot of teams that could be in the mix. And I've brought that up a lot. But I think what will separate a lot of these teams is your quarterback play. Josh Allen can carry this team on his back. He definitely can. And I think that is what can ultimately separate them from a lot of these teams that are going to be you know, battling it out for wild card spots. And the Bills could still win the division, too. 
but we'll have to see. But when it comes to Keon Coleman, like I said, when you got your star quarterback giving you praise early on, that's got to give you confidence. And like I said, especially as a young player that's just getting his feet wet in, in the NFL. So we'll see what kind of season that he can have. Let me know what you guys think. What are your expectations for Keon Coleman in his first season with the Bills? Again, they got some veteran receivers to surround him. Like I, like I said, they added Curtis Samuel. That move I liked. Khalil Shakir, I think, is going to have a breakout year. and Or he could have a year like Gabe Davis where after the four-touchdown performance against the Chiefs, you know, kind of just is the same. But I think Khalil Shakir is a good player for them. So you got Khalil Shakir there. Curtis Samuel, I like that move. And then you got some other veteran receivers there as well looking to make an impact. You got a couple of good tight ends. And you got a running back that they relied upon a lot towards the end of the year. And that was something that even, you know, before doing this this show, I would say it on my radio show at, at, at my school, the Bills were one-dimensional because they just really didn't run the football. Josh Allen was their best best runner. So, but I think they could have a balanced offense. You know, and again, they, they still have their quarterback, so. But we'll see what happens. Let me know what you... Let me know what you guys think about Keon Coleman. What are your expectations for him? Uh, and how do you see the Bills performing? How do you see their offense doing now with Stefan Diggs not being in the fold? So we're going to take now our third break of the show. When we come back, we will talk about Jim Harbaugh, his approach to OTAs, and how he's kind of already changing the culture with the Chargers. So that's what we will do when we come back from our third break of the show. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 